Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm, the, I'm Peter Sefton, I'm the research manager at the University of Technology, Sydney, until next Thursday, um, after which my position has been made redundant under one of those VSP voluntary separation program we have. Um, so I realized that I gave stupidly long titles to a couple of talks I'm giving this week. Um, so we'll move on. Um, okay, so just to give some context, and I, I don't know how many people were here for the, for the last presentation. Um, I'm involved in one of the other things standard research object crate. RO crate, somebody could, I'm getting a bit of background noise. Could the person on the phone mute? Um, so the RO, the RO crate specification is, um, it's a way of using uh, schema.org and JSON-LD, it fits nicely with the last discussion, um, to describe and package research data. It really started as a packaging um, uh, exercise where we were looking for ways if you have a bunch of files um, in a zip file or sitting on your hard disk, how do we, how do we provide good context for that good, um, good metadata? Um, but it also turns out that the way we've done it, the um, RO crates can be um, used for discovery and uh, description, and you can pop one onto a website. So the standard was uh, just released a month ago, um, the version 1.1 of the, of the spec, and you can look at that online. Um, okay, so, um, just to have a, just to show very quickly what RO crate looks like. Uh, RO crate uh, is just a, an RO crate is a directory uh, on a file system somewhere um, with really only one compulsory thing, which you can see on the left there, it must have an RO crate metadata.json file and that has schema.org in it. So um, I guess I don't need to explain JSON-LD um, and schema.org to this audience, um, and particularly after the last talk. But this is um, a description of a data set, and it lines up pretty well with um, Google's data set search. So RO crates um, should be discoverable from the Google data set search. There's more work we need to do on that, but it, it'll describe the thing as a whole, as a data set using the schema.org data set type. Um, and it can, it can have as much or as little data about the files and the variables inside the files as, as you like. So it would fit well with the, the work we've just heard about if you were distributing uh, a spreadsheet of ABS data or something, you could wrap it in an RO crate um, and there's standard tooling across a number of um, programming languages and so on to deal with it. Uh, and uh, repositories and tools around the world are now starting to, um, to add support for it. And on the right, um, we have um, a recommended optional feature, which RO crate should have, which is that they come with an HTML page, which is a human readable version. So you see, I've got a scientist there and a computer, both reading the, the same data in different forms. So the, uh, the HTML can be generated from the um, uh, JSON LD um, and provides a human readable summary for what's inside the crate. So that's what we've been working on. Um, the thing I talked about last time was uh, we've, RO crate has, using schema.org has worked quite well um, at the discovery level. If it's, there's enough, there's enough in schema.org um, to do the basic discovery metadata that you need for crates, um, for, for research data packages with a little bit of fudging around the edges um, dealing with the vocabulary, which was largely developed for commercial pur purposes by uh, search engines. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't a hundred percent fit, but it was pretty good. So you can talk about, you know, names and dates and um, you can model people and organizations, funding relationships. Uh, so you can get, you can, you can quite easily um, model um, a data set, but we have discovered in particularly in working with some humanities groups 
that uh, we can push the research object crate stuff much further. Um, RO crate makes a distinction between what we call data entities. So the, da the data set, which is the root, which is the thing that you're talking about, um, and uh, files contained inside the data set. We kind of repurposed the schema.org media object for that because it didn't have a kind of native file um, uh, class. But, um, but also importantly, there's contextual entities. So if you're talking about the author of a crate or you're talking about um, the um, uh, organization that was funded by a, a funding body, you can talk about all those organizations and so on. Schema.org is fine for that. We've come into trying to deal with um, more abstract um, crates where a lot of the information is actually contextual. So one, this is an example. Um, this is a bit of text out of the spec. Um, uh, and it kind of, this summarizes uh, what I was talking about last time. I think I came with some kind of questions and some hand waving and some silly ideas last time to this group about what we might do. This is what actually ended up getting um, written into the spec, um, which is a very pragmatic way to let um, people expand the vocabulary. So this is a real, the, the examples we used here come from a real project. I'm working with uh, Dr. Alana Piper, who's a, um, historian of criminology. You have to be careful how you say that. You don't want to call her a criminal historian um, who's been, who has a large data set, um, which is um, the archive of the Victorian prison system from about 1850 to about 1950. And she has a, um, had a big crowdsourcing exercise to transcribe all the records. Um, and we can describe most of that, people, places, um, so on. We can model uh, the context of each of those archival records pretty well using schema.org, but there are some things uh, where uh, the things that Lana wanted to say about the um, about the data were not really easily done with this vocabulary. She wanted she wanted specifically education to say what education people had, what level of education um, interests is made up. Somebody else made that up, but we had. Um, this is just an example in a spec, but you know things like um, sentencing uh, and convictions, which vary across the definitions of those things vary across different jurisdictions across the world. So what we ended up coming up with is as a way of expanding um, a vocabulary in a temporary way um, is uh, we've allowed Alana to define her own terms and um, the tooling that we've got for this, she, she gives us stuff in spreadsheets um, and when we generate the research object crate, which has all this contextual information in it, um, we also generate an HTML file, which defines just actually just prints out the, the definitions that Alana gave us. And then we give her that HTML file back and she pops it on her website. So we end up with something, she has criminalcharacters.com as a, as a website for her project. And if you go and resolve that URL there, criminalcharacters.com vocab education, you get a human readable um, gloss for, for what education means. So from a practical point of view for a human, it's about the same as using schema.org as we saw in the last talk. Um, the schema.org has a website and you can go there and you can read what the terms, the definitions vary in quality, but you can find out you know, definitions for terms and classes. So in a purely practical sense, this is what we wanted to be able to do. And we started to build tool chains to let people define their own vocabulary and pop it up on schema.org. Sorry, pop it up on their own website. Obviously, I want to come back to this is not great at a community level, and we should work out ways of working together to build um, vocabularies um, and extend things like schema.org, but it's a pragmatic thing that we can do. The other thing that we've added here is um, just, to, just sticking up a website to define something is a tiny bit dodgy. So um, the other thing we're doing is encouraging people with the, uh, if they are using ad hoc terms in, in RO Crate, to actually put a definition in JSON-LD into the, into the package. So what we have here is um, how you, you could put in this education property 
was a label education um, and actually put it in the crate with the data. So there's going to be, the, the data set for this will have about 50,000 um, records, PDF records that have been um, scanned and transcribed with all this context around it. And some of these people have had, you know, up into the dozens or hundreds of convictions over their um, criminal career. And all of that contextual information is um, described. So the data will actually ship with its own vocabulary. It's not ideal. It'd be better if a group of the um, um, historians of criminology could get together and come up with a shared vocabulary. But this is, this is what we've decided to do so far. Um, another data set we've been working with, this one um, is uh, Expert Nation is a, is a history exercise um, started by um, the, the universities that were around in the early part of the 20th century. Um, it's actually led out of UTS though. Um, by Tamsin Peach, Associate Professor Tamsin Peach. Uh, they, have, um, they have data which is in Heurist. It looks like this. Um, so Heurist is a sort of semantic database from the University of Sydney, um, which has been around for a, a long time and is not really aligned with modern practice for doing linked data. It is essentially a linked data um, thing and it has its own notion of ontologies and so on, but it doesn't sort of mesh well at this point with the rest of the web. So we wrote a um, some scripts which pull the data out of Heurist. It has complete API on it, so that's a that's a fairly straightforward thing to do. Um, push the data into um, JSON LD using the RO crate, um, you know, guidelines for how you do that, um, and you end up with something. I'll, I'll send a link so people can when. When I'll tidy up this presentation and, and, and give it to Rowan um, and this will have a link into so you can go and have a play with this and have a look at it. Um, the, here um, we have the, the, the problem was more extreme than with the Alana's data, the criminal data I was talking about before because the heurist is a complete self-contained world with concepts like eventlet for things like births and deaths and marriages. <laughs> Um, and it does not easily map onto something like schema.org. That would be a very, very major undertaking. So we did a similar thing in this one where um, we consumed essentially the, the, the definitions for things like people and universities and so on that were in Heurist. And they had sometimes names like person two as the type. Well, make, make it a bit hard to sort of map them onto schema.org because you don't know whether person two is just a artifact of some accidental history or whether it's a second type of person. Um, so we just actually preserved the heurist ontology. The problem with that though, is it means that it does not mesh well with other, does not play well with other data sets. You can't find a person and know that they're the same person between this data set and another data set if it's all self-contained on every separate um, project. So, um, we did a similar thing uh, to what I showed you with the locally defined classes, but there are lots of them um, and we can publish that data set. What I think having worked with a, these couple of projects and more we're talking to is schema.org is quite close to being able to do, um, to be quite good for our, for the universities and for the GLAM groups. Uh, you do have people and events and I've worked with people like, um, Deb Verhoeven, uh, who studies movies. And if you're studying movies, no problem, right? It's, it's, they're very well modeled. Um, you can, you know, down to actors and producers and screenwriters and everything. Um, but if you're trying to do criminal history, you don't really have um, the level of precision that you'd like. So, you know, we have courthouse in schema.org, for example, but it conflates the, a courthouse is a place or a building it doesn't give you the opportunity to separate the institution of the court from the, where it's located. And that, that, that might change over time, or you might have things like circuit courts that you know, appear in different places. So um, the, the fundamental building blocks are there in schema.org. And I think it would probably be a sensible way to go to build out from that. I don't know if anybody on this group has been involved in any of those projects, but uh, that's 
kind of what we're thinking of um, thinking of doing, um, so that we can when we're starting when we're dealing with these projects um, for people. So, so for example, for for Tamsin, she wanted a website which was stable to support a book um, that they're writing, which was a snapshot of what's in Hurist at the current time. Um, so we, by pulling the data out of the current Hurist instance into our RO crate, it means RO crate, we have tools for generating a static website and we can build a static website for, with information about all of the, um, the people in that database. It's about the employment history of people returned from World War One. Without needing any special web servers or whatever, but we can also build. Um, we can we can build access. We can build a, a site which might run for a couple of years, which provides um, more detailed um, search services and so on over the top of it. Right. So I've actually come with questions here. I should finish up and maybe we can discuss and people can give me some suggestions. Uh, kind of, just to sort of summarise where we are, we've come up with ways of capturing existing. Um, sort of ontology, ontolo, ontologies or schemas that are kind of buried in a system like Heurist and for and simple ways for researchers like um, Alana Piper to extend vocabulary she needs and the tools we need in the immediate future for her to be able to put up um, you know, um, explanations of what those terms mean. But it would be better if we could come up with um, a pipeline where we could we could sort of build out on the schema.org, I think schema.org um, vocabulary uh, for use uh, in you know, academic projects. Uh, another, I didn't really say it was, came up on the screen, but didn't really talk about it. One, one of the approaches we're doing with, um, with the RO Crate project is we, to help seed this sort of development, um, we're doing a very simple thing where we are letting people choose a namespace on the RO Crate website and add terms to it. Um, and there'll be a simple way for you to do that, like by uploading a CSV file or a spreadsheet with, with some terms, and they're going into a common place. Similar, I think, to what ARDC has done with their vocabulary thing, but using very simple tools, you know, a GitHub repository, um, which will automatically generate um, from a spreadsheet, it'll generate the definitions of terms and things for people to use. Um, but that's not as good as having a, a more fleshed out schema.org. So I'll finish up there.